Hello and welcome. In this video, I will be demonstrating our Infinite Syncs tool for ARCHICAD. As is the theme with all our Infinite tools, this object is capable of being configured to any sync available on the market. You can also store your custom configurations using our component catalogs and assemblies feature. This feature allows you to store and manage component definitions. I actually need to save some default syncs in this object, so I thought this was a good opportunity for a demonstration. These are the three sinks that I'm going to create. The first one on the left is a laundry tub, then a typical kitchen sink, and then a sink that has a non-rectangular border. So obviously we'll start with the easiest first. I go into the tool, I make sure all my assemblies and components are set to undefined so that I can define them myself, and now I want to define the sink. As you can see up here we've got a bit of a strange configuration, that's just from my playing around, so we'll need to rope that in a little bit. First we choose our mounting type, I'm going to choose above counter. Then our sink shape, I'll stick with rectangular for that. The profile, I'll also sync with a straight edge for that. You can do a polygon. I might actually, once I've finished configuring the general shape, change it to a polygon edge. But we'll stay with the straight for now. In the bowls, I only want one bowl, so I'll reduce this down to one. And I want that bowl to be rectangular. In fact, I might want a polygon, but I'll check that later. I'll stick with the straight edge for now. I don't want any recess, and I don't want any drainers. Now that I've done all this, I can basically go to the 2D and then fine tune the shape there. However, I'll set the size to something a little bit closer to what I know it's going to be. Okay, let's go to 2D. Place the object, place it over this object, stretch it to the right size. We might just bring that other object forward. Now we want to stretch the basin to the right size and position. Stretch the size. Adjust the positioning of the tap hole. Adjust the positioning of the waist, check my mitres. So in here I actually have a distance of 15, and down here it looks about the same. Back into the object, set these to 15, and then I simply need to set my rim heights and my depths. Now that I have defined the sync configuration that I want, I go back to components and I store this as, and I hit store. That laundry tub definition is now available to me to use throughout the project. Another aspect is that you can assign an image. In here I left it on the default image. So if we now go back to undefined, you can see that I left it on the default image. I can set that to no image, or I can create an image. The easiest way to create an image is simply take a 3D view. Now that looks a little bit better. I'm now gonna go through and create the next two sinks, but I'll speed up the video a bit. Now one of the reasons I chose this sink is because I get the opportunity to demonstrate the polygon recess and it's the polygon recess function is the same as when you choose a polygon sink function as well. So there is that flexibility to basically create sinks of any shape with obviously a recess of any shape. So let's do the recess now.
Okay, let's have a look at that in 3D. And there you go. Obviously, that recess has an angle on it as well. So you can just come in here and set that angle. With the waste component, you can set a different waste for each basin. So I'm just setting basin one here. These are the generic waste types and you can define the size. As this is a kitchen sink, I'm gonna use the basket. I'm also gonna set its size. So there's my basket waste. Now so I can easily reuse that waste, I'm actually gonna store it. Hit store. Now I can simply apply that waste to both basins. Back to components so I can see it all. Looks like I saved the bottle trap image with that definition. So I'll have to change that. Click OK. OK, so now I'm just going to take a screenshot of that so I can save the image. Now when we store this configuration, that new image will be assigned. The next thing I want to do is assign an image to this waste. Now that I have my sink and my waste defined, I then want to do my tap configuration. With the tap hole we positioned previously, we simply need to give it a name. So I'm going to go back to the components and I'm going to use this same name. So if I just click undefined, I can then copy that name, set it up here for the tap. And I'll use this single tap hole image and then hit store. Now I can select that configuration, assign my 2D settings, reassign my sink. And now I can store this as an assembly. So I will call this the sink and I'll do waste and then hit store. Now when we apply this component description, it locks down those elements that we have defined. Okay, now that those two are done, we're going to move on to our more complex shape. I'll start off with a basic rectangle and configure most of the elements and then I'll change the shape. So we might actually start with our laundry tub, undefined, position and stretch it. Okay, so now I have my general shape and configuration, I'm going to make it into polygons. So first I'll control the bowls, seeing as though they're internal elements. Now the first one is a rectangle, it just has a larger chamfer. The second bowl, however, will need to be a polygon. Now with the polygon configuring nodes accessible to us, we simply need to move them into position. Okay, so now that we have our bowl shapes, we can go do the overall shape. Back into the settings, go to the sink, change that to polygon, and now we can do the same with the sink boundary that we did with the bowl boundary. And there we have our overall sink shape. Now we need to put a couple profiles into this. As you can see, there's a recess and there's also a chamfer on this edge. So we'll build them in.
Okay, now we're getting a bit closer, but, but it looks like we've made our recess a little too deep. Anyway, we'll fix that up in a second. So our rim height is five mil and our recess is 10 mil. That's okay. That might be the case in some scenarios where the recess goes deeper. So let's see how we can achieve that. All we need to do is for our sink, we need to choose the polygon profile. Click OK. Now when we return to 2D, you can see there is a guide above. This guide allows us to define the profile of our sink edge. Now further down here, I conveniently have that profile. So I'm just going to copy this element and bring it up into my profile. Then I simply need to trace that. Now, because I can bring these nodes down below, that will allow for our recess that goes a little deeper. Now when we look at that profile in 3D, you can see we have the perfect section. Okay, so there we have three completely different sinks of varying complexities from the simple up to the quite complex in geometry that can be handled very easily and swiftly by our Infinite Sinks tool. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope you look forward to using Infinite Sinks for Archicad by CAD Swift.